Good morning, everybody. This is Scott Stengel from Melco Applications team. Uh, here with Nate Moore, who is the DJ behind everything. Back hey, guys, there. I'm behind cameras today. He's switching scenes and doing all the magic he does back there. Uh, today, I'm going to try and share with you uh, some keypad shortcuts that will speed up uh, your daily routines and uh, help you move forward and backward into different places in a sew out if you need to repair areas, stuff like that. Um, and so we're going to give you some keypad shortcuts that keep you from having to run to the machine or to the OS um, every time that you uh, need to uh, do certain commands. So the first one I want to discuss with you is bypassing a trim. Man, this comes up very often. So let's just set up sort of a, a scenario here. Um, I have my garment loaded in the machine, uh, my designs loaded, all the colors are filled out, and I start sewing, and as I start sewing, uh, I see a fray break, which is where you get a ball of thread up uh, uh, in the needle, the lower part of the needle case. Um, that usually happens when the hook hits the thread and starts, uh, it's bruised, and so it starts fraying until it just can't take it anymore, and then it uh, breaks. So we'll just start. I'm going to sew this design. Uh, we're going to fake this because I never have thread breaks. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sewing along, and as I look, I see that, oh, there's a wad of thread building up. So I hit stop. So uh, I take the thread, and I will fix it, and I will re-thread it. I'll feed out some more. And uh, I want to back up now because I missed some area that was uh, sewn by just frayed thread. So if I push the back, nothing happens. Well, it does happen, as Nate says, but it shows up on screen. So in OS, you can see the machine is telling us, I'm not going to let you back up because you need to trim the thread first. Remember, the machine doesn't have eyes. Um, and so it keeps track of when the thread is in the cloth at all times. If the machine had trimmed and I hit stop, I could back up and do all sorts of stuff there. But it will not let me back up, and there's a reason for that. Um, since we feed the thread, we have to hold the thread very tightly right here um, so that none is allowed to slip and we have full control over the thread tensioning. Um, so for that reason, if I start backing up, I'm going to pull the thread because it will not release it as regular tensioning machines will do, and I will eventually break the thread. Um, so we don't uh, allow you to do that, but we do allow you to override it since you have eyes and the machine doesn't. So the way I can do this is run over to the computer and hit no. Um, I don't need to do a trim because I know better. Or as I choose to do it from the, the keypad, I don't have to move. So when I try and back up and nothing appears to happen here, the override command is wiper plus the hoop. So just below the two side arrows. You'll hear a beep. And now I could back up and get to the point that I need to in the design. <clears throat> All right, so that's how to bypass a trim. Um, anytime the thread is in the cloth and you try and back up, it's going to um, stop you from doing that. And you kind of get to where you can, uh, you know, you try doing your backup or whatever, nothing happens. You just go right to the bypass trim and then um, back up manually on that. Okay, so another point here that uh, we bring up in class that I think is kind of important um, is I'm getting ready to, you know, fix the area uh, or re-sew the area that I missed, and um, sometimes the second stitch after where I start could be a very long distance, and what happens is the thread can go slingshotting back through the eye of the needle because uh, we don't have our tie stitches. Those are the tight together stitches that we need before and after all trims uh, in embroidery. So what I teach is <clears throat> I pull out excess thread. We do that by lifting up the, the idle roller, pull out what we need, pull out a lot. I preach that thread is pretty much free. <laughs> Uh, when you consider everything else. Okay, so I'm going to hold the tail, and it's very important um, that I hold it loose. If I hold it tight, it's going to deflect the needle, and that can cause a needle break because um, it's not going to make it in the hole. So I will leave this uh, very loose, 
and I will sew enough stitches that it's going to be secured because the next problem you can get into is if I uh, I'm going to show you how to snap the thread you could stop the machine clip the thread with a small pair of scissors that's probably the right, right way to do it Nate's back here laughing I can tell that he snaps the thread like I have done forever um, you do have to use discretion in this, right? I wouldn't do this on a silk garment or something like that with very light stitching. But usually when you have this kind of a problem, it's on the underlay. And so if you let it sew for uh, 50 or so stitches um, and snap it, everything works fine. It's just a time saver because I don't have to stop, go find the scissors, clip it, then hit start. I would, I would also add if you're used to rayon thread and you're moving to polyester thread, it's going to have a little more oomph. Oh, does it ever. I got a lovely thread cut the first time that I switched between rayon and poly <laughs> and tried to snap it and I, ran it right across I my finger. I could definitely see that. And I learned this because, well, when I started for Melco, machines didn't have trimmers. So every color change, you had to pull the next color and let it sit, and then you snap the, yeah. <laughs> and I would, I would definitely not do this on squishy, pulley materials because you are going to be pulling that, that right, thread a little exactly. bit. exactly. And <clears throat> maybe the second most important part here, other than let it sew 50 stitches or so, um, is you really got to snap fast. I, sh <laughs> I show people this in class and I get it. They're, you know, a little bit nervous and so they try and pull slow. That's not at all what you want because then you're deflecting the needle. You're giving yourself more distortion. So a good fast snap is what you need. So I'll show you this. Uh, we got good views. It's a little bit hard to see this, but I think you can trust me. You can see the thread here. Nice and loose. Hit start. Wait 50 stitches and snap it real fast. Snap. Just like that. Fast as you can do it, um, faster the better. And it would keep on sewing from this point. So it snaps right down at the uh, at the fabric level, so there really is an issue. Uh, as we say, use discretion on this. You, you know, I, if I ran out of bob and halfway through a wide satin stitch, right? There's no lock stitches when you start back up, and you didn't have any when you ran out of bob, and so I wouldn't use it in that situation. Um, sometimes when we're repairing uh, uh, designs. Um, and I fast forward to a certain location if I, like I said, ran out of bobbin or something like that. Um, I, I, what I don't want to do is uh, have the stitches fall out on me. So what, what I'll do is back up a little past where I need to uh, go. I will double sew that area and I'll finish the design. Usually I you know, don't snap the thread and I'll just leave it tailing on a part of the hoop that's not going to uh, get it sewn in. So then when I bring it off of the machine, I'll do a trim media just to take care of this one. <clears throat> when I take the hoop and the garment out of the machine, I will actually flip it over and there is a product called Freycheck. Show it over here. Uh, Freycheck is, is a product. There's also another one called Frey Block, $2 or so um, at all sorts of sewing places, etc. Um, it's sort of like uh, clear glue and so what you'll do is flip the the sew out over and I will put a dot of this um, at the the part that I started fixing where I need to do the repair. This stuff dries completely clear. It never washes out. It's like liquid lock stitches is what I call it. Uh, fray check is one. People in class have told me fray block works really good about the same price. It doesn't yellow when you wash it but we always deal with new garments and embroidery, right? So we don't usually see that. Okay, so that's uh, how to bypass a trim, and it's also how to uh, uh, <coughs> snap the thread and everything like that. So um, I also want to show you one place in the software. Sometimes uh, thin, very thin satin stitches, thin garments, something like that, Occasionally, I might get a uh, false bobbin break on the machine. That's where everything is still looking great, but the machine uh, thinks that the, the thread is broken. There's not enough pressure on the sensor. Um, if, if you would like uh, kind of a tip you can do here in OS is go to Tools, um, and then 
Um, well, I could do it in the, well, I can't do it in the UI. So uh, I'm going to show you the SUI in a second, but we're going to do this in advanced mode because that's the only place I can adjust this. If I go to tools and settings, you can see right down here, backup on thread break and also on bobbin break is here. This, is, this decides how much the machine backs up when uh, either a thread break or a bobbin break happens. Um, if you change this 17 to zero, um, every time that this false bobbin break should happen, it just stops in place and you can look at it, everything's fine, and just hit start and it will keep on sewing from that point. Um, so not a bad tip. If you want to go back to the way your, uh, everything was set up originally, this um, icon right here sets it back to the default values. So that's uh, how much to back up on a thread break. Okay, so we'll move that out. Um, and now we'll talk about uh, repairing sew outs. So uh, in this uh, scenario, <laughs> you can see, switch it over. So hey, where did this design come from? This is one Nate and I did when we did the digitize along. As you can see, the, the design sewed, but for whatever reason, uh, it missed the dot on the eye in mourning. We got a little bit of the underlay got, under like there. a few stitches, but it's only uh, under 20 stitches, the whole dot. So it could be such that if the bobbin didn't catch on, whatever, it could make it through the dot and move on um, to another part of the design, keep sewing, and everything looks great. All right, so I pull this off the machine. This is in my garment, of course, instead of just fabric. And that's always your last chance to fix stuff. You always want to look at it when you take it off the machine instead of just looking out the window and popping all the hoops. Please, once please, please look at that before you unhoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And we've fixed a bunch in the past. I've rehooped them and had to twist them to get them the right angle and try sewing portions. And it's no fun. It is doable, but it's much easier if you don't pop out the hoop yet. Okay, so uh, I have this design. I'm going to pop it inside, back inside the machine. <clears throat> and I am at the start of the run. I am going to uh, reset and go back to center so that we're all together here. So um, <clears throat> we can move through the design. Of course, the slowest way would be to hit the forward, uh, uh, move forward without stitching button. Um, but that's going to take forever because this is like 6,000 stitches into this. So different ways to move around. Um, first of all, I need to show everybody that uses the uh, SUI how we move there. So we can switch back and forth from simple to advanced mode. Now I'm in advanced. To go back to simplified, I will go tools and restart in Melco UI. All right, here is the simple interface, easy to understand and use. Doesn't contain all the features advanced mode uh, has in it, and that's why we call it simplified mode. Okay, so to move, I move up here to the move uh, screen, click on it, and then right here I can move a color at a time, either fa uh, backwards or forwards, or if I want to move to a, a certain stitch number, I would just blew this uh, out and put in 5,000, 3,000, 3,500, whatever it is. Um, and then I will click on this uh, icon to move to that location. What's kind of nice is if I pick, say, 5,000 and, oh, that's too far, I can actually just change the number to 4,500. And in effect, in one click, the machine backs up 500 stitches. So a, quite a nice time saver. Okay, so that's moving around in the uh, SUI. We can also do this through the keypad, which I will show you uh, in a second here. I'm going to go back to advanced mode so I can show you a, a really cool feature. And so I go to the gear, which is uh, uh, settings, and then I go to advanced settings, which is the gear again, and then the M. And that switches me right over to the advanced mode. Um, both modes are running. When the OS is running, you can have your pick on which mode you use. We just recommend you stay in that uh, particular interface for the sew out. Not all features are available in SUI. Okay, <clears throat> so back to the repair. I am at the start of the design, but how do I know that? Well, we have a really cool uh, 
icon up here and feature. If I mouse over, the help tag comes up. It's called Display Stitches Sewn. Um, this is uh, software dependent. Um, it's only in Melco OS, um, but it's been around forever in advanced mode. <clears throat> okay, so why would we use this? First of all, I'll click it and you can see everything turns gray. Um, the way it works is as I start sewing, um, the machine will colorize the stitches along with me so it helps me look at the screen and I can see where I am in the sew out. Um, so I would use it either to see uh, how much is completed on a, on a head, let's say, that I can't see directly from the computer. Or I think the number one use is to assist you in moving to a precise uh, stitch or part in a design. Grab a little water. All right, and <clears throat> um, it will colorize it as it sews. So how do I uh, how do I get to this dot here? Um, different ways. Um, so a cheater way that I like to do it is to go to Design Shop, and I will switch to this design. <clears throat> okay, and so uh, what stitch counter so is this dot? Well, I know that it is gold, so it's in st uh, color number six. If I would scroll it to get precise, oh, here's the dot right here. So I can click on it, then I would scroll up, holding shift to select everything in the range. Now I have everything up to that point selected. I look down here and I see I'm about at stitch uh, 7100 or so. I would go back to OS. I could go Tools, Settings, and the Move. That's how I move in the Advanced mode. And I would move to uh, a, a certain stitch. I say I put in 7100. Oops. Move to Stitch. If I move this out of the way, you can see it's colorized where it is. So the dot isn't colorized, so I know I haven't got there yet. It, um, I can also use uh, different, com there is one other command um, on the keypad, which is move to trim. Okay, so we see here's how we move to stitch. There's also move to color. So um, I could, you know, at this point, um, tell it to move to uh, color number six or something like that. Many times it's easier to find things by stitch count or by color, so it's your decision on that. And I will hit OK. I'm still not far enough, so I don't want to move a color at a, ahead because I'm on the color that I need to be on. I just need to move in shorter increments. So there is a, a short key, like I mentioned, to move by trim. And that is the star or the trace, um, plus the up arrow. So this will move uh, one trim at a time. So star plus the up arrow. And now you can see that it's uh, starting that. Let's say I didn't know and I wanted to go one more further. Oh, now the dot is colored in as I can see um, on the interface. So I went too far, so I need to back up. So if I use the trim, uh, or sorry, the uh, trace plus the down arrow, that will move me back a trim. All right, so now, kind of hard to see, but I'm right at the dot um, where I want to start sewing. Use the laser. There we go. So Didn't yeah, see. no, you can see that. Um, one thing I would like to mention is the move to trim is available for um, the, the latest machines. It may not be available for earlier machines. This was something that we added. Right, we added, sure. Great feature, terrific feature. Um, okay, so uh, if I want to move by color, um, remember that's instead of the trace, that's just the needles plus the up or down arrow. So that's a way to fast forward a color at a time but more precise is the star plus the up or down arrow, which is move by trim. Now that I've got it in the location that I want, all I simply have to do is hit start, and we'll sew the dot. And then it does the trim. 
this point I'm going to stop, right? Because I don't want to double sow the rest of what's already sown. So at this point I'm finished. Well, how about I load another design? No, you can't do that. The machine knows that it's busy and you know, he probably doesn't want to do that because he'll ruin the, the garment that he's working on. So the way that we uh, start over is to reset the OS. So that is reset design here. And I'm going to move back to hoop center, which is common where we start. Okay, so now we're at stitch zero. You can see that everything is uh, gray, so we haven't sewn anything. And at this point, I'm ready for uh, to put a fresh garment in to, to do an, a, a new run. So um, that's how to repair sections, how to fast forward through um, to get to areas quicker. So we can either do it by stitch count, which we would go through tools, settings, and the move. And I can plug my stitch count in there, or I can move to color six right here. Or another way to move, as we said, is by trim, and that's in the newer OS's uh, with um, the trace plus the up or down arrow. Once you've completed sewing that area, reset the design, move back to hoop center, and I'm all ready to start the next design uh, or the next run, whatever I want to do. The machine is freed up. Okay, um, so hopefully you can repair some garments uh, after that. The next uh, thing I want to explain to you is um, how to jog uh, the machine partway through a sew out and continue sewing from that part. So uh, in this scenario, I've just taken a design that has oh, two snowflakes that I did uh, forever ago. <laughs> and uh, so I'll pop this in the machine. Okay, <clears throat> and I will load the design. Uh, I'll do it from oh, from Design Shop, my favorite way. So file, machine, load design. I'll go here and pick my hoop. And I will change the color sequence. Uh, red, white, and blue. Okay. <clears throat> to save... Uh, time, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, of course, sew this, so I'm going to move ahead. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to move to the start of the third color. The uh, uh, sort of the scenario I put together here is um, I have the two flakes sewn, but for some reason I want to take the third flake and sew it in another part of the hoop. So I've moved, or I will, to color. Okay, that's finished color one. You can see that it's colorized on the screen. And I want to go again, so needles plus the up arrow. And it's white, doesn't show up so well, but uh, it is colorized right here, and I'm at the start of the blue. Okay, if I hit start, it's going to sew, sew them straight across. Um, when would you use this? This is always a great one. I have kind of a hard time thinking up different real life scenarios for this. I've, I've done it a lot with out, repairs. With repairs, like you popped out the hoop. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it kind of depends on your knowledge of design shop too, right? If I wanted to sew three d different places and garments, I would make three separate designs and just go there or not. But, you know, if you don't have uh, excellent design shop knowledge yet or whatever there there could be times when you'd want to jog but it would be pretty inefficient so okay so we're here we're to start of color number three i'm going to take and uh jog so let's go hoop in the down arrow <clears throat> and let's say that i want to sew the third one right there <clears throat> if i just hit start on the plus machines um it's going to say, I, I don't think you want to do that. I think you want to continue sewing from your original location. And so it will actually move back to where it straight across and sew it that way. So uh, I need to have a way to tell the machine that I want you to sew from this point on. And so uh, this is located in the manual. Um, 
I've pulled it up for you so you can see um, what we have is retain XY position right here. So if I hit the up and the down arrows after I've jogged it, that tells the OS um, that I want to keep sewing from that point on. Um, also, like we talked about earlier, we have move to color back and forth if you want to see that again. And then, um, yeah, that's here we have bypass trim like I went over at the beginning. So uh, all sorts of great uh, keypad shortcuts right here. Okay, so the one I want is the up and down arrow. So I jog down to this location. I hit the up and the down arrow at the same time. I hear a beep, and then when I hit start, it's going to sew from that point. And I could sew a couple thousand stitches here, <laughs> but to save some time, um, I think you got it. So it, what will happen though is it will finish this flake at its current location and it will move back to origin like the machine always does. But since you jogged it, it's a different origin. If it was hoop center and I moved down, it's going to move back. It's going to move. Its origin will be the distance I moved down, basically. So make sure if you jog or something like that for your next run, you want to go back again to hoop center and um, finish it up like that. All right. So hopefully um, you can move faster through your designs either by color or by trim or by stitch count, um, and you can complete uh, repairs and parts of designs in different parts of the hoop. Um, <clears throat> And one last uh, trick uh, that I'll put in there for today. Uh, this is one I use often um, that I think uh, if you don't know about it, it'll help you out. If I put a fresh garment in the machine, I like to see if it's straight, right? I can use laser registration if it's not, but it's always good to just see, hey, did I hoop this straight? So the trick that I do is um, I will close the grabber. Well, first I need to trim from the last design. <clears throat> close the grabber to get that out of my way that's wiper plus the bullseye and then since I'm at uh, the start of a run which I'll fake that here too I can jog up or down and if there's a stripe on the polo shirt or uh, a seam or there's a pocket or something that's going to give me that horizontal, what I choose to do is look down the needle case. And so we have uh, this bar uh, right here, which is a thread guide, I guess we should, could call it. it, has three holes per needle in it. This is horizontal. And so if I take and I sight down onto the fabric from this bar, that's going to tell me if I'm crooked or not. Uh, <laughs> you can tweak the sew out just a little if you're crooked, just a little if it's the right fabric and on and on. Who hasn't done that, right? Denim or something. Be careful. If you're using performance wear or polos or something, you can't twist it a half an inch and have it work. You could rehoop it, right? Or you could use laser registration. But really, that's a great one to just look and go, yep, I got it straight. Put it back to where you want to be in the hoop to start and go ahead with it. So. Uh, that's what I have for today. Uh, hopefully you got some stuff on it, Nate. Yeah, no, uh, there's a question, what page in oh. the manual are the keypad shortcuts? I'm going to say <laughs> I can't tell you that because every time we update, uh, it increments the page numbers by about one. So check in the table contents. It will link you there or control F uh, is find. Um, and so you can, you can do that to find the keyboard shortcuts. I think right, in, right, right now they are sitting around page 90. Is that what you said? 89 and 90. I okay. didn't say it on purpose. No, I you said it, it to me earlier today. <laughs> uh, but yeah. yeah, that's why. <clears throat> it is. So easily searchable. Um, and you might print it out, put it up on the wall. I, I encourage that for people to learn the keypad shortcuts uh, real quick. Those pages. Don't try to print the whole manual. No, just those pages. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you again next week. Thank Have you, a guys. Good day.